Hi, and welcome to this Greg's Base Shed video. I've got something a little bit different for you today. I'm going to talk about how jazz evolved out of blues. So if you're interested in blues and jazz and playing walking bass line, then this is a brilliant lesson for you. I'm going to show you what I call the evolution of the jazz blues. I'm going to show you how the jazz blues sequence evolved directly from traditional 12 bar blues and how the 12 bar blues sequence is at the heart of all jazz blues standards. To keep things simple, I'm going to show you the evolution of the jazz blues in the key of A major. Now this is a common key for traditional blues, um, so that's why I'm showing you it in A. Um, but when you come to play the jazz blues, then B flat and F are the much more common keys. But once you kind of see this progression, then you'll be able to transpose it into B flat and F. All the chord cool progressions and charts from this lesson are in a free PDF. You can get that by clicking the link below this video in the description. So I suggest that you get this PDF now because it's really useful to have as you go through the lesson. So first of all, I'm going to show you the most basic traditional 12 bar blues chord sequence and I'm going to show you how that can evolve over another four choruses into the jazz blues progression. So this is the basic 12 bar blues, probably a lot of you know this sequence. We've got four bars of A7, um, so this is in the key of A, so that's called 1. Then we've got two bars of D7, that's called 4. And then we've got two bars of A7 called 1 and then a bar of E7 called 5, a bar of D7 called 4, and two bars of A7 called 1. So this is the most um, basic 12 bar blues progression. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play through this basic progression with drums and guitar. I'm going to use a sort of boogie bass line. Okay, I'm just going to play that over all the chord changes. Um, these first couple of bass lines I'm going to play, I've written down on the PDF as well, in tab and standard notation. Um, but this is a basic kind of blues bass line that you should know. Okay, so I'll demonstrate this chord progression now. This is the second chord progression, and what I've done, I've added a chord 4 into bar 2. This is called the quick 4 change, because it's called 4 and we changed the chord 4 more quickly, so we changed the chord 4 in bar 2 instead of bar 5. Okay, So then we've got um, back to A7 in bars 3 and 4, and then the sequence carries on as usual, and right at the end, have a look at that last bar, you'll see an E7 on the second half of a bar, and that's the kind of turnaround, that's the start of a blues turnaround really. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll play to this progression using the same boogie bass line, but you'll hear me change quickly to D in bar 2, so I'll kind of play half of the bass line and then on D, and then back to A, okay, and then carry on, okay, and then you'll hear, listen out for that, um, that E7 right at the end in the guitar and the bass, um, so that's called five before we start the progression again. Both of these first two progressions are very common um, in standard traditional blues. Um, sometimes you play with the quick four, sometimes you don't. Okay, so make sure that you know this progression back to front because it is the basis for the jazz blues progressions as well. And if you know this um, 12 bar blues progression then you can survive a blues gig or a blues jam night. Uh, most of the tunes are going to be using the 12 bar progression. If you're enjoying this lesson, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also, if you ring the bell, then you'll get notified of all my new video lessons as soon as they come out. Now, from this point onwards, things start to get a bit more interesting as we move away from the traditional 12 bar into the jazz blues. Look at this progression. It's very similar to progression one and two. 
but have a look through and see if you can notice any changes. So hopefully you spotted we've got this E minor 7 and A7 added into bar 4. Now when we add chords in, these chords are called additional chords, and when we change chords to different chords, these are called substitution chords. And additional chords and substitution chords are really common in jazz. Um, players add them in all the time. Now, this E minor 7, A7 to D7 at the start of the second line is called a 2 5 1. Okay, now 2 5 1s are really common in jazz. Um, you find them all over the place. Um, so, what it means is that we take D7 where we're heading to as called 1. Okay, so the overall key is A actually. Um, so, normally you'd think of A as called 1, but in jazz we kind of think of mini key centers throughout the whole progression. So, if we think as D, as called one, um, if you go up the scale, the second note is E and the fifth note is A. Okay, so E is called two, um, A is called five, and D is called one. Okay, so that's like a, a two, five, one in that progression. Okay, now it's a bit tricky to get your head around this, um, these different key centers in jazz, um, but it's an easier way to kind of analyze the progressions. I'm now going to play through this third progression and I'm going to use more of a kind of walking bass line. More of a jazz style bass line in, um, rather than a kind of blues um, riff type bass line. Okay, so have a listen to that. So this will sound slightly different and also listen out for that 251 in bar 4 to 5. Well, hopefully you heard that the whole thing is starting to sound a bit more jazzy now. Um, so hopefully you kind of picked out that 251 and you heard the walking lines. Okay, but this is still a very, very basic jazz blues progression. So if we move on now to the fourth progression, um, things are hotting up a bit here. Um, so have a look through this now. This is the type of progression that someone like Count Basie would have used in his tunes with the Count Basie Orchestra. He was around in the 1930s, the kind of late 1930s. Um, Count Basie was a real jazz pioneer and he especially kind of developed the big band jazz sound. Um, he was very heavily influenced by blues. Um, so have a listen to some of his tunes like Wayback Blues or Cafe Society Blues and you'll hear this kind of style of early jazz blues kind of uh, mixed in together and listen to those chord progressions. So the classic kind of Count Basie changes that he uses um, were if you're able to look in bar six we've got this D sharp diminished okay so you've got D7 and then you've got upper half step and a diminished chord so that's very common and if we look in bar eight we've got this F sharp um, that's called 6 in the key of A. Now this was quite common to put this called 6 in bar 8 as well. So um, this was a kind of fairly um, kind of well used progression at that time in the late 30s. So we've got this E minor 7 and A7 as well uh, in bar 4 still. But if we look at the last line it starts to get really different here. Okay, we're starting to get into the real kind of pure jazz blues progressions now. So that B minor 7 is called 2 and then E7 called 5. So that's very common, called 2 and then called 5. And then we've got a turnaround. Okay, so this is what the turnaround sounds like. Okay, that's called 1, 6, 2, 5. 1, 6, two five and then it goes back to one at the start of the um, next chorus okay so it's getting quite involved now um, and if we start walking to that um, it just sounds like pure jazz because we've got these cool changes in there already to play with um, especially on the turnaround when you play those walking bass lines to the last two bars you only have to um, play the root notes for these four calls you only have to kind of fill the gaps in with one more note okay 
Now it's worth mentioning at this stage that there isn't one jazz blues progression to rule them all, okay? There are many different types of jazz progressions, but a lot of these chords weren't really written down, okay? What I'm doing is I'm showing you kind of how um, the jazz blues came out of the basic 12 bar progression, okay? So, but a lot of these chords can be used at your own discretion. So if you're on a gig, the bass player might kind of um, imply some of these extra chords um, and then the guitarist, for example, might hear them and go, oh yeah, yeah, it sounds good, I'll do this one, or they might not. <laughs> um, so musicians are listening to each other and kind of um, putting these extra additional and substitution calls in and then just seeing where the soloist might go with them, for example. But really, this is kind of where the musicianship comes and the experience comes in, okay? Um, but I'm kind of writing them down so you can see different options that you can use. So listen to me playing a walking bass line to this fourth progression with the guitars and drums. This is the last progression, progression five in the Jazz Blues Evolution, and I've added in even more chords. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just loading up the um, 12 bars with lots of chords, and this is the kind of thing that a guitarist might do if you looked at the blues, the Jazz Blues progression. You might put these extra chords in here, okay? So when we're walking, we don't have to use them all, but I'm going to use them all um, just so you can kind of hear how they sound like. So if we look in bar four, we've got this E to E flat and then down to D, okay? Okay, so what the um, E flat is, this is something called a tritone substitution. Now we're getting into the depths of jazz theory here, so I'm not really gonna linger on this too long. Um, but really, if we've got, the, we've got the E minor seven, would be E minor seven, A seven, D, okay? Now instead of A, um, we've got this flat five, E flat is the flat fifth of A, um, and that's called a tritone, okay? And what tritones do is they, they give you a kind of nice smooth linear line. So instead of doing E, A, D, we can just do E, drop down one fret, E flat, and then drop down one fret to D, okay? So it's giving you a kind of um, an option to play a much smoother bass line, okay? Now we've got some other tritones. If we look at um, bar nine, um, so that's the um, the first bar of the last line. We've got this um, an F is a tritone for a B, so that kind of leads nicely to the E. Um, and then at we've got the B flat in the next bar is the tritone of E, and that leads nicely to the A. Okay, don't worry too much about this. It's kind of quite advanced theory. Okay, but that's kind of explaining why these chords work. Um, and then we've got descending sevenths chords in bars seven and eight. So we've got kind of like, it just goes down A, so A7, G7, F sharp seven. Okay, so they're kind of called descending um, dominant chords really. Um, and then on the turnaround, we've got every single note, okay, of the turnaround, okay. Um, all those notes. Now as bass players we would use all the notes anyway. That's that's the kind of the type of root notes that we'd play for a turnaround actually. But on this one you'll hear the guitarist plays every single chord, which they won't always do. So listen to me playing a walking bass line to this fifth and last progression and listen to how many chords the guitarist is playing. Well, that's it for the evolution of the jazz blues. I hope you found it interesting. And um, as I said earlier, this isn't a kind of definite defining end sequence um, that's used all the time. There are many different jazz blues sequences, but this just hopefully illustrates to you how we had the core 12 bar um, blues chords and they're still there at the end, but they've been slightly changed. There's additional chords and there's substitution chords. 
Now, there is a progression that's sometimes known as the bebop blues changes, um, and I suggest that you learn this one really well, because if you're playing at a jazz gig or a jam night, then this is the progression that you'll often use in the solos. Um, you can add more of the chord changes that I showed you in the last couple of progressions, but this is probably the most common progression that's used kind of jam nights and during solos, as I said. Okay, um, so this you'll find this progression in tunes like Bag's Groove by um, Milk Jackson, Billy's Bounce, and Now's the Time by Charlie Parker, and many more. So this is kind of real Charlie Parker era, um, this kind of progression. So over time, um, the, the kind of progressions changed to, um, depending on who were using them and how kind of jazz was developing. So bebop was kind of a lot of faster changes in it and a lot faster tempo. Now you'll need to transpose this progression into F for those last three tunes um, and it'll look like this, okay? Um, now again, this is all in the PDF. Um, I've put these last two in there as well. So you can play directly to those tunes using this progression, this sixth progression um, in F. In a minute, I'm gonna play through all of the progressions so that whole evolution of the jazz blues in one go so you can really hear it's fairly quick but you can really hear um, how the progression is developed now if you want a copy of this backing track with um, bass and drums then you can get that on my website gbshed.com forward slash shop and look for backing tracks in there or there's a link below this video in the description um, so in that backing track pack you'll get all the pdfs and you'll get the uh, mp3 backing track so that's really useful you can just take that and just play through and experiment with um, different walking bass lines and trying to get your head round the progressions first of all if you're learning the progressions I'll just use root notes first of all okay um, even if you're playing them on each beat or at the beginning of the bar just to kind of hear how these progressions work if you're really interested in starting to play jazz bass um, or you want to work on your jazz bass playing then check out my new course it's called walking through jazz I've got about 50 people going through at the moment having a really great time with it um, you can start that course at any time and you have lifetime access to the course it's a video course and it's a deep dive into the jazz blues standards it kind of shows you how to play walking bass to jazz charts and really explains a lot more about jazz theory than I did in this lesson this was a kind of quick overview of it um, so you don't need to have any experience playing jazz or you don't need to know any jazz theory to start taking the course because I'll show you it all in the course so um, to check that out you can click the link below this video it's called walking through jazz or just head straight to GB shed forward slash videos okay so um, just check that out that's a video course it's called walking through jazz don't forget to subscribe to my channel you can do that by clicking the red subscribe button in the corner of the screen and download the free PDF as well now I'm really interested to hear how you got on with this lesson if it was all new for you if you knew some of it or if you want some more kind of video lessons on the jazz blues or jazz bass in general just let me know in the comments I love to read all your comments there and if you want to help support me to keep these YouTube videos and PDFs free, then you can always buy me a coffee. You can see the web address here. Or if you want a clickable link, that's below in the description. So check the description out. There's loads of stuff in there, basically. Loads of information and loads of links. This is Greg from Greg Spaceship. Enjoy the playthrough in a minute. And I hope to see you very soon in the next video lesson.